So on to the next. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the show Origins of Hip Hop. Yeah, yeah. Um, they had a couple of good episodes that we didn't get to talk about. So, you know, because um, I don't think we got to talk about they had Eve on one episode. Uh, she talked about her background. You know, she's from Philly. Um, and I never really realized it, but, you know, one of the first songs she did with the Roots and... Um, and got um, me. Yeah. Yeah, and Eric Badu. Yeah, she never actually got credit on that. Um, you know, that that's her voice, but you know, they make it seem like Erica Badu is doing the rap. You know, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. They never actually list her name on the song. Damn. And I never realized that she because she said that um something happened to where it was when it was time to record, um, she was running late and so, you know, she rapped, but you know, they didn't give her the credit on the song. So I don't know. I don't know if she got paid or not, but I know she don't got no actual Credentials on the song, so, so I thought sucks. that was kind of messed up. Yeah, so that, yeah, that sucks, man. Um, that's really like a legendary group, like right? You would think, but yeah. she rough riding. <laughs> exactly. So that worked out better for her. You know, she started off, you know, almost getting signed by Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. Well, she did get signed by Dr. Dre, but because of the way Dre's process is, she was getting a little antsy and just kept saying, you know. I've been sitting here for six months, and I, you know, I got signed six months ago, and I ain't made no songs. You know what's up? And he kept telling her, you know, timing. You know, it's not the right time. Just give me some time. And she just kind of kept pushing the buttons of, you know, I'm tired of sitting around. Um, so he eventually just dropped her. Yeah. You know, what I mean, he uh, dropped her from his record label, him and Jimmy Iovine. And then what's funny is, you know, she ends up on Rockefeller, not Rockefeller, uh, Rough, Rough Riders. Riders. Which is still under Def Jam, which is still under Jimmy Iovine. Yeah. So, you know, she still ended up under Jimmy Iovine anyway. Yeah. But, you know, I think um, Rough Riders was a better place for her. You know, they needed the um, the female, the pit bull in the skirt. As yeah, she said. they needed that energy. You know what I mean? Because that, of, yeah, yeah, that was so. perfect for them. Yeah, because they had too many, man. Yeah, they had too many niggas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. X, the yeah, Locks, man. Drag On, Drag on Swiss. On them, yeah, they had too many niggas. And then, yeah, he kind of, you know, all right, so he helped balance so, that out. Yeah, kind of helped balance that out. Yep. Yeah. And instead of, um, you know, just to test her out, she had to battle every last one of them. Damn. And she was working her way through the whole crew, busting ass. So they knew they had to sign her. You know what I mean? So that's what's up. You know what I mean? She held her on against all of them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and then, uh, so her episode was really good. She talked about, you know, she how she lives in London now. She's married um, to that guy, and uh, she's playing the mom, stepmom role. You know what I mean? So yeah. she doesn't really get back to Philly a whole lot. But um, the next episode was uh, Ice-T, uh, which was a really good episode. Talked about him having uh, his early days in gangster rap and kind of the pimp rap. You know, he kind of helped pioneer both of those, you know, the pimp yeah. rap and the uh, gangster rap. Uh, Because he was coming up in the gang culture and in the pimp culture. So he learned a lot of stuff from both sides. So, um, he also served. He was hmm. also the military man. Did he get into that? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, Yeah, he was was also the military man. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, his episode was really good. Talked about how he, um, you know, when they first heard him, how dope he was. Somebody, I can't remember who it was, took him to New York and was helping him get um, affiliated over there. He said that was a big culture shock from him for him, um, and so you know, but it helped him to really get nationwide credit in hip hop because yeah. he was known on the West Coast. But once he came over to New York, they started hooking him up on the East Coast. You know what I mean? So did they? Uh, and that's another thing too. Like he he said, really, he was not that he got credit for it, but he was kind of like with the pimp stuff. Mm-hmm. He was rapping before rap a little bit. You know, he said that he was already. Kind of ramen, right. so when rap came out, it's like, oh, I'm already doing this. Exactly, so I just, that's a no burner. Yeah, but yeah, so yeah, man, I'm thankful. You know, Ice T uh, was one of my first few albums that I bought. You know, his um, uh, album where he had his wife Darlene on the cover, his then wife. You know, yeah. uh, that was one of my favorite albums, and um, you know, I liked a lot of his stuff, man. You know, I was I was a real big Ice T supporter. You know, so I see he had. I mean, you know, one thing about him, like. You know, because even him, he he would say, like, I, I don't think I'm the greatest rapper out there. Like, the, right. cause like the way if it, I, I feel like he's a, like, if KRS-One was watered down, that's he would be Ice-T. Right, Because, right. like, Ice-T, Ice-T did, yeah, he might have the pimp shit and the gangster shit, but he did 
spit some knowledge too. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He did drop. He now he'll drop some knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Like that song "Race War" um, on the Home Invasion album, man. Like he actually dropped some knowledge on that. Yeah, shit. man. That's what's up, man. Don't sleep on Ice T, man. He still he released music as recently as like 2020, 2021. One yeah. So you know he doing his thing. He's man. still doing shit with body <clears throat> body count, body count yeah. going hard. Yeah. yeah, they talked about body count on there and how um you know how he got into a lot of heat because of those uh, cop killer lyrics and all of that. Cop you know. Killer. So yeah, man, that's my dude. He said um he talked about his family how when he grew up um. Because he was getting into the pimp game and the street game with drugs and all of that, um, that he got kicked out of his house and all that. And so he said that um, pretty much once he got kicked out and left, he never looked back. He don't really talk to his family like that, even to this day, I don't think. Dang. So I was like, damn, no wonder he don't never talk about family and his music or none of that. You know, the only thing you hear about is maybe his wife, you know what I mean? Whoever yeah. his wife is. So I always wonder. And another thing that was dope. Which I always wondered, and he answered this question for me. His song, Six in the Morning, said he modeled it after Schoolie D's PSG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I always said, man, they sound a lot alike. You know, not that he was biting his rhymes, but they had that same kind of tempo, cadence, that mellow yeah. cadence and all of that. And I always felt like, you know, he uh, kind of got some influence from that. And he said, yep, that's exactly what it was. He said when he heard PSK, he said that blew him away. PSK to making that green. People always say, mm, what, what the hell does that, that mean? <laughs> School yeah. days. Yeah. And six in the morning. Yo, he had the same. Yo, I love that, man. That was one of my, I think that was the first song I heard from Ice T, Six in the Morning. That was his, because, yeah, that, that's another thing, too. A lot of those groups back that came out, you know, they, they were kind of really under, like, the whole... Run DMC cadence like they yeah. kind of came in like that because they people was already familiar with that. Yeah. But then they started getting to like like you said their own style. Um, yeah. But I mean for him to do that cadence is definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was dope, man. I mean, if, I, I encourage anybody if you can check it out. You know, Origins of Hip Hop is on uh, A and E, uh, and I'm, I'm assuming you can probably see it on their app or maybe on like Hulu or something like that. So, you know, go check it out. If you have a uh, cable, try to look for it on demand or, or something like that. You, can, you know, you got the dot .org. Or, dot org yeah. or, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Got the hookup. I'll yeah. let you hear me. Yeah, it's cool, man. classic, man. Oh, man but anyway, uh, we're going to leave Master P alone. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next. Um, the BET Awards came on last weekend, and, um, you know, it was pretty much trash as usual. You know, nothing special, but... <laughs> One thing I did notice, um, they, they a lot of artists, I, I saw their mics uh, weren't working good. You know, the, wow. you know how the, the audio just wasn't quality. You know, when you go to stuff like the Country Music Awards and all these other awards, the Academy Awards, you know, them, them mics be on it. Oh, yeah, that like, gotta be on point. Right. Somebody getting fired. Right, but BET, I was like, I be hearing artists, and I'm like, you don't even sound good, and I can tell it's just the microphone. Like, especially if it's a group, one person's mic will work good, but the other person will come in and do their rap, and you can't barely hear them, so they either got to switch mics or something like that. And it's like... BET, get it together, man. Y'all ain't got no good quality equipment. Y'all a multi-million dollar company. You know what yeah, I mean? Probably yeah, billion dollars. Yeah, y'all owned by white people now. Y'all should have good shit. Right. Unless. Unless somebody doing people, something yeah, on yeah, purpose. Yeah, pretty much. Like, well, they're going to let them know what BET is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Give them the old PBS microphones yeah, that we used to use in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to oh, love it. Right. <laughs> I was like, dude. Oh, like, but honestly, the only thing I stuck around and watched the show for was the um, tribute to P. Diddy. He got a Lifetime Achievement Award, which, you know, it was kind of funny because he actually performed in his own tribute. Damn. So it was like, you know, uh, could, you know, that could be a little on the arrogant side, but whatever, you know. Um, but, you know, I still I still dug it. You know, it was dope. He had um, the locks came out and performed. Uh, Shine came out and did his Bad Boy song. But what was dope, I liked it. Um, 
Shine, when he did his, he did the first verse, and he changed the lyrics. Because, you know, he's not into the street stuff no more now. Yeah, he's, yeah, uh, yeah. He's heavily into Judaism. You know, he, you know, the whole, does the whole spiritual thing. So he changed the lyrics, and it still worked out. It was still pretty dope. Yeah, yeah. Um, then, of course, we had Little Kim come out. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, um, this is, she looked a <laughs> mess. She looked a mess. I mean, it's like she trying to wear these sexy outfits that show off her skin, like these see-through pants and stuff like that. And it's like she's so oddly shaped because you can tell she done got some work done to make her, make her a little more hippie and thicker in the hips. And it just don't look good. You know, it's like you botched yourself up. Your face don't look as great. Your body looks like you overdid it. Everything just looks like you overdid it. And then you, you know, the little dance she always come up there and do and all that side to side. It just, it was just like, come on, man. It's just not working. I really it's feel. It's not working. I really feel sad for that woman. I do too, man, because I knew her this year. Yeah. You know, I, and I mean, she had, there was nothing wrong with her. It really Just because somebody told you you looked a certain way. Now you feel like, oh, okay, I'm going to hook myself up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some meat on my hips. I'm going to add some this on my cheeks. And I'm going to. Do this to my forehead, and now you look like them. What's her name from Shrek? Uh, Fiona. Damn. <laughs> you know what I mean? She kind of look like. Damn. It's dude. like she don't look the worst. I'm just being funny, but you know, it's it's definitely overdone. It's yeah. definitely overdone, and I really wish that she wouldn't have done that. And I remember the first time I saw her after she started getting the surgery, I was like, "Who the fuck is that?" And it was like, "That's the little Kim." And I was like, "Nah, no, it ain't." No, it ain't. Yeah, I You're mean, like, yeah, that's her, bro. <laughs> it's just, you know, women, you know, men folk, we got a really a responsibility for that. Like, I mean, that's something I have to learn. Yeah. Um, women value our opinion when it comes to looks. Right. Um, you know, they really value our opinion, especially like if, let's say, if you a man, you get, you know what I'm saying? You start looking at other women and stuff outside right, of your right. home. Yeah, they, they get self-conscious about that shit. So, yeah, yeah, always, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you affirm, affirmate, you know, if I'm saying that right. Affirm. affirm yeah. yeah, let's say affirm. Okay. Because I'm just making a word. You know what I'm saying? What <laughs> we makes you jogger We jogger ties and <laughs> scripturalize and <laughs> petroputralize. <laughs> but anyway... Make sure that you have affirmation uh, with with your woman and let let her know that hey you know it's it's only you you know we care you know I care about you I love you I love you for you know flaws and all because and that's the thing everybody can't be you know I mean shit I got flaws fuck I got man boobs you see these shit <laughs> you see these but I keep you know what I'm saying you gotta keep going you know what I'm saying like every you know, you can't let, you know, some people come through and just mess mess up your whole psyche because there's something, you know, they can't get, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, like I said, it's just certain things, you know, women do hold on to those things. Yeah. And we, we can't, as men, as men, we have to, you know, try to, build them up because especially black men because we've always you know there's so much stuff you know what I'm saying there's so much stuff that's already beating them down anyway and the black the black woman is kind of like you know they're doing all this stuff and they're awesome but they're like the most hated for whatever reason yeah she birthed all of us yeah you know what I'm saying yeah, <laughs> like, man. For what? hug a black woman Right. Hug a black woman for yeah, real. Because if it wasn't for her, nobody would be here. Not now one of you. Not now <laughs> one of y'all motherfuckers. But yeah, so, you know, yeah, and I man. mean, when I think about stuff like that, man, you know, it, it can happen to men and women. Because oh, if yeah, you look yeah, yeah. at people like Michael Jackson, it, what happens is the people who are closest to you are the ones that can F you up the most. Yep. Because those will be the main ones joking about how funny you look. You you know, they always told Mike he had a big nose. You know what I mean? Looking ne next thing you know, by the time he passed away, his nose was paper thin. Damn. Damn near falling the hell off. And, you know, they, uh, you know, joked about him being uh, dark skinned and this and that. His whole family, his father, uh, bro brothers, all of them used to joke with him. And so he started doing stuff, just chopping himself up. 
And I mean, I still respected his music, but I hated to see him always trying to improve on what he thought was a flaw. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It was like, dude, you're not, there's nothing wrong with you. When I look back at them old photos of him and the Jackson 5, all them niggas had noses out to here. You know yeah, what I mean? Man, breathing all the white yeah. man there and shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> all of them niggas had noses out to here, <laughs> but yet they're picking on him. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, I guess what I mean, and that's what it, I mean. That's the thing. What it is is, I think they were just that's that's you know something black culture that we do. Right. We, we fucking run the dozen on each other. And yeah. so, me being a cancer, sometimes it's, it, it, I get sensitive and shit. Yeah. So I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you yeah. sometimes, bit. But that's the thing. That's just our culture. But at, but at the same time, like I mean, after that, I mean, that's how far they take it. Really, they don't really. After that, that's pretty much it because it's like, okay, we still don't have, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's, yeah, they yeah, just, it's yeah. crazy, man. They I just, mean, yeah. I just, I can't even, I don't, I'm, I'm like that too. I, sometimes I, you know, when I was young, I used to get a little, little sensitive when oh, people yeah. joke with me about oh, stuff because yeah. when I was smaller, you know, my ears was like them Will Smith. Oh ears, damn, and they so was the, out there, bro. The Dumbo Jones. Yeah, so, you know, I, it, you know, the older guy kind of grew into him, but man, listen. I had the Luda joints going on. It was out Luda. there. And so that used to bug me out, you know, when people used to mess with me. But, you know, it is what it is, you know what I mean? So, But I never got to the point where I was like, huh, I want to get some surgery to pin my ears yeah. back or some well, shit. You know? First of all, we can afford that shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> um, but, you know, I don't think I would have even if I could have. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just, it, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't enough. Yeah, I think so, my problem with uh, I had like well, I still got it. I think one of my like I got a lazy eye, and then yeah, the, the man boobs. Yeah, and I mean yeah. you got to be like you know you got to be like somebody like uh, like Biggie. You know what I mean? He didn't give a damn. You know he'll tell you I'm black and ugly as up. No, However, <laughs> stay Gucci down to the sun. You know, <laughs> and then he had all that shit. He had the lazy eye, all that shit. He didn't yeah. give a damn. Well, damn mean, if he didn't catch a woman uh, all the time, you know. What yeah, I mean? I mean, but that's what it is—the con, the, the confidence and stuff. And it's, you know, what I'm saying for me, like like I said, it, it can be it can be challenging. It is it is tough, yeah, you know. What I'm saying, and you know, going back to little Kim, I mean, like I said, I mean, hell, back in the '90s, I mean, she wasn't like my favorite rapper, and I always kind of thought she was hoarse. Yeah. But I never said she was ugly. Me either. Never, I never thought never. That. I never thought You know what I mean? I was like, hey, I mean, when I look back at her old pictures, I'm like, you was fine. Yeah, you fine. Mama, you was fine. Come yeah, on. she was fine. So I don't, I don't get it, man. But, um, you know, it, that's just, you know, that was a topic of discussion. Uh, even though it was supposed to be all about Diddy, it turned into a look at the hell. Look what? at what the hell just walked on stage when Kim walked out there. But, um. You but, know, I don't know, man. But the, the tribute to Diddy was still pretty good. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Diddy just deserved it. I mean, in a sense, even though, like, yeah, he might ruin artists, you know. But at the same time, like, you know, like I was telling you, he he knows how to put things together. Right. He had he had, he had the eye near. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I I have to give him that. Um, I mean, no, is he? Is, Brother love my favorite human human being? Probably not. Right. But I mean I have to give but I mean I have to give yeah, I have to give him, you know, like the acts that he brought together. Yeah. The people that he put together. Um, you know, was definitely, you know, they would he was definitely like the East Coast answer to like back you know, back in the day to like, you know, death row and stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah I definitely. mean he was definitely that answer. So Yeah. And that was kind of needed at that time. Yeah. You know, for you know for New York. So, yeah, man. I mean, you know, I, I think it was dope that they gave him a tribute. You know, his mom was there for it. Uh, she mm-hmm. was in the audience. Uh, he talked about her in his speech. People like, um, you know, they had interviews from people like Busta Rhymes and all them who can just talk about how dope it was to work with him in the studio and stuff like that. Because he was a visionary. I give him that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, um... You know, he didn't write a lot of his own lyrics, you know what I mean? Most of the time, he would just get somebody to write stuff. Mace, Biggie, whoever, you know, lots. But, um, you know, he he played his part because when it came to spotting talent and his little ad-libs would, you know, just set the song off. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. All that, all that little stuff he did, you know what I mean? The, up in the videos, 
dancing, <laughs> doing the Harlem Shake, all that. Even though it, it, you know, it rubbed certain people the wrong way, but it still made him because you, or you came to expect that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, it yeah, brought yeah. a certain energy to the songs. Yeah, he might, maybe he overdid it. I don't know, but you know, it worked. You know what I mean? I liked it. I like seeing him dance because he was good at it. You know what I mean? And um. Just his ad libs, you know, take that, take that, you know what I mean? All that little, the little stuff he did, uh, you know, in the background, all that stuff. That stuff made the songs dope too. So I gotta give him a lot of props for that. And he knew how to pick. Okay, this is the beat you need. He didn't make beats, but he knew how to say this. Yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah. this is what works for you. Yeah. This is perfect for Maze. This is perfect for Biggie. This is perfect for the locks. So he was good at that, man. Um. But yeah, Little Kim, she did her verse from The Quiet Storm, and I think she did the Benjamins uh, uh, verse, All About the Benjamins. I think she messed up on All About the Benjamins, but I think people kind of overlooked it because they were just looking at how crazy she looked. Yeah. So, you know, but yeah, you're going to have to go back and check it out. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. You know, congratulations to Diddy for the lifetime achievement yeah. and all that. Yeah, you know. yeah, I guess we're good. Definitely well done. <laughs> but, um, you know, before we uh, sign off, we want to talk a little bit about the increase in the mass shootings that have been happening, you know. And fights. Fights, all of that, man. Oh, Just, it's it's crazy, love. man. Yeah, be careful out here, man. Yeah, you know, niggas um, shooting. That's why I don't go nowhere. That's why I'm like, I don't go nowhere because you never know. I mean, I get nervous sometimes even just going to the movies, you know what I mean? But, you know. Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, because really, you you know what's crazy about that? that, Like, I I don't know if we talked about about this on the show, but you would think, because what happened, you know, I mean, now this was years ago. What would happen, you know, what happened with uh, when the Batman came out and it's like, oh, I'm the Joker and da 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 and start right. shooting. Yeah, you would think that they would have a little bit, you know, the movie theater would have a little security. bit more security. Yeah. I'm not, not that I'm calling for that because I don't think we, that's, you know, we shouldn't, you know, people should go to see the movies. Yeah. And it shouldn't be like this whole thing like, oh, we living in fear and, you know, oh my God, like, yeah, and I think that's probably one reason why you know they didn't do that because like look you know we kind of don't want that for our industry but you would think that oh damn you know movie theaters got shut up now we got to do some stuff to check you know check this that and the third because you know most of the time the worst thing that happened to movie theaters niggas sticking in candy and like whole ribs right and, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> whole you know like whole meals and stuff yeah, like man. my man come up with a puffy jacket. Like, you know, we bring it out home. Yeah, but man, I'm bringing out like champagne, right? And beer and shit, like you know what they hustle like, man. Yeah, man. yeah, yo man, you know what I'm saying? I got them cheeseburgers to right. the fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> up, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so like that, man. You know, so, but yeah, I mean, with that, um, like I said, the situation of Buffalo, the um, the Uvalde, that, that, that Uvalde, Uvalde, Texas. Uvalde, yeah. Texas I think there were some other ones um, that was Connecticut. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, what, was it Connecticut? I think um, it was. It, no, it might. Mine might be in California. There was one in California. Yeah, the one in California. Yeah, yeah, uh, so. But yeah, there was actually some fights in like retail st- yeah. retail stores, mm-hmm. man. Like, like getting crazy with these yeah, fights, man. Crazy, man. It's like this this real low class culture is taking over, man. Where people just. Are triggered by the slightest thing, and well, I, I think just, a lot of it is because you know, with the with the with the vid and everything, everybody was out inside. Yeah. Now everybody's outside, and now they have like a lot of pent up. You know what I'm saying? They got like a lot of pent up uh, aggression. So just the least little bit of things. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's, just it's crazy, crazy, man. So yeah, you know, be safe out there. You know what I mean? Just. You know, like I said, when I go to the movies, man, I don't even go to the primetime joints, man. I go early. Oh, you know facts. I, mean? I go early. Facts. Man. One of the first showings, you know what I yeah, mean? My f- yeah, yeah. Uh, by me. the time everybody else trying to go, I'm like, Shh, I already seen the movie and have. We've yep. been talking about it all day, <laughs> bro. 
So, yeah, so by this time next week, you know, I'll be talking about throwing love and thunder because I'll probably go before the show. Yeah, because I don't think, yeah, because like I said, I don't think, well, you know what I'm saying, they, they ain't going to get up early and stuff. Right. Cause, I mean, that's the thing, too, because they're going to try to catch the most people. So, yeah, you wouldn't be like, man, I'm going to get up early. I'm going to kill these people right. at 12. With these these five men, people that's in the mat. Yeah, in the mat. And I'm going to send a statement. Right. Like, nah, that, nah, that don't make sense. But you know, oh, and um, I don't know if you got to see it yet, but uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is on Disney Plus now. Okay, um, I need so to, yeah, that's well, I, I gotta wait on my one movie, my uh, Britney's brother. My, I'm a movie, I'm a movie dude. We, okay, okay, yeah, we we go watch movies together. And stuff, yeah, so like we actually saw the Top Gun joint. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, well, it, was, I actually, heard it was pretty good. It was actually pretty good. I like the fact that it was. You know, what no agenda in it, like, you know, pushing certain agendas. Right, like a, right. It was still diverse enough, you know what I'm saying? But it was, yeah, it was good. It was a good movie. That's what's up, man. I, I mean, I figured it was going to have some good action in there. Um, you know, I, I um, saw the first one back in the day, but it was never, like, my favorite. So that's why yeah, I was like, Yeah, oh. I, I kind of wanted, so that's the thing, I kind of wanted to see. Yeah. Because I've seen it. But it's been so long, like, I mean, I was born in 83. It came out in 86. Yeah. I think I remember, like, my mom getting it. I think, uh, remember back in the day, I don't know, like, the library, you could go get VHS tapes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. you get yeah, VHS you tapes, tape, and you can rent them, and, yeah. then, and you got to take them back on a certain date. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so she got Top Gun. I remember seeing bits and pieces of it, but I didn't really... But like I said, I was a kid, so I didn't really know um, everything about it. Right. I remember certain things, but it's like I said, it's it's been a it's been a while. Yeah, and there was a lot of those types of movies coming out around that time, man. You know, in the, the mid to late eighties. Oh yeah, eighties was like rah rah rah. You know, America's badass. Right. Got guns. Blah 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 right. blah blah blah. Hold Top on, let me shoot. Gun. Let me. Yeah, let me shoot up the. Shoot up the <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Oh, man. Simple fire. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like Top Gun, you had Iron Eagle. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had all these, like, airplane yeah. types of movies, you know? Which, I mean, it was, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, I, it was kind of cool. You know what I'm saying? At that, at that point in time, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to, like, man, how are you cooning? Nah, it was for, like, as a country, as a whole. It was really good to have those type of movies to kind of build yeah, stuff up morale. But now it's like, because I mean, e- even like with you know the fourth is coming up. You know what I'm saying? Like I I do, you know, s- despite all the shit America's done to black people, I you know what I'm saying it was it's still cool to have those songs and look like you know like well I like Ray Charles when he did America Beautiful best. Best one who did it, in my opinion. Fuck yeah, it. Yeah. Absolutely. Him. And then, like, um, Marvin Gaye, when he did the Star Spangled Banner oh, remix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. Can you see? You know, like, <laughs> killed it. Yeah, killed man. this shit. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Remix the whole shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I mean, those to uplift the, you know, yeah, I. I can respect that, but what's bad about it now is just so it's it's just it's demonized to be patriotic. I mean, and for reasons so, it's like yeah, you know, we're we're in this country and blah 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 blah. blah. But it's like yeah, but you kind of stole it. And really, you want to be truthful of this? A lot of y'all people just still like second or third generation here. If you were like born from immigrants, da 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 da. Black people realistically kind of been here longer than y'all motherfuckers have. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that's a fact. I mean, even even if even if they got here first, per se, even if they got there first, you know, they could still travel and go back. When right. black people got here and was a slave, they were stuck here. There's no way they could go, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, so some of those people, yeah, some of those people, they was here a long time. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people. But anyway, going back, like I said, the the um, you know, the patriotic stuff, like the little, like you said, Top Gun and all mm-hmm. those types of stuff. 
I mean, it was cool in the eighties. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. It was, yeah. you know. I mean, it was propaganda, but it was, you yeah. know, it was the eighties. Yeah. Hey, yeah, it was a lot of that going around. Yeah. But, you know, it was a good movie. You know, it's a lot of good movies. You know, and that's yeah. that's. I think that's why a lot of stuff now, you know, is all about the remakes. You know what I mean? Because they can't think of nothing new. You know, they're like, hey, uh, yeah. let's just go back and redo this that was popular in the 80s. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm kind of sick of it. Well, I mean, I, even though the Top Gun was a good remake, I will say that. And it was, and it represented a new generation. I will give it that. But, yeah, I don't. Yeah, but I, I think, like you said, like the remakes, it's just, it's just like, damn, they ran out of ideas. Right, I mean, it's just like the magic of Hollywood. In fact, the ma- really the magic of Hollywood is just gone. In my yeah, opinion, kind of because yeah. you got you got you got people like Netflix. They got their own shit. They got their own studio. Yeah, you got Tyler Perry. Love him or hate him, but he's still doing his shit. You got Damon. You know Damien Dash. You know Damon Dash. He's doing his shit. You know which I ain't really saw none of his shit. Right. But he still, but you still have, see, now you got options to do things. Like, back in the day, if if it wasn't Hollywood, I mean, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was it. But now you got options. So you, you got, you having people coming up with different ideas and different, you know what I'm saying? Like, they got different, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, that's the thing nowadays. I mean, because you, you know, even like stuff like the Marvel movies are big right now, but even they're still based on old comics. So it's not yeah, really yeah. hard for them to come up with a story. They already had it. It's just now we're just trying to put it on the big screen. So we might have to twerk it, tweak it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, not twerk it, but tweak it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know. Miss Marvel should have been able to twerk it, but I have flat in the pain. <laughs> I know, right? And yeah. Carry it in the comic books. You mm-hmm. big. Yeah, yeah, she's a lot better than uh, in the comics now. Um, yeah. You know, I'm waiting for the next movie to come out where they have all the different versions of Miss Marvel in one movie. Yeah. So that's gonna be nice. But um, but yeah, so you know, but you know, when it goes going back to the whole mass shooting thing, you know, be careful. Yeah. Especially man. we got the um holiday coming up on Monday, Independence Day. It's gonna be a lot of fireworks and stuff like that, yeah. and gatherings yeah. and try to you know avoid I mean? big crowds. Yeah, so you know, be awesome. be on the lookout. If anybody walking around looking suspicious, yeah, man. Which you know, nowadays everybody looks suspicious, but yeah. <laughs> but you know, but you're you know, the description, right? <laughs> Open and shut case. Open shut case. Let's break um, crack on them. Get out of here. <laughs> sprinkle some fireworks on this. Yeah, yeah. God damn it, Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, just be careful, man. You know what I mean? Because. Uh, I believe we're going to still be dealing with this for a while, you know, because well, a lot of the, because the economy, really, I mean, yeah. this is kind of like the, you know, kind of what's coming up with, you know, and, you know, someone made a good point. I was listening to somebody, they made a pretty good point. It's like, yeah, you know, this is the 100th anniversary. You know, we're near the 100th anniversary of the Great Depression. And like yeah. this happened, you know, this happened in, uh, yeah, 20, yeah, 29. And we're about, you know, we're not, we're only a few years away from being 100 years out of it. Right. And look where we're at. So, you know. Yep. It's so, crazy, man. You know, we're, about to, we're about to see some. Yeah, man. So, you know, I definitely, uh, I, I feel like I don't, I want to say I don't want to see any more of these mass shootings, but I feel like I know we're probably going to. But, you know, I don't want to be a part of them, so I'm going to keep my black ass home yeah. as much as possible. Oh, yeah, I mean, but they, and that's the thing, too. Like, they, they trying to, they really trying to, I don't know, but the whole narrative of, you know, oh, they're trying to take, you know, guns away and take guns out of American owners' hands. But the thing of it is, I, well, I mean, I can kind of see that narrative, but this yeah. is the thing. The people that, like, the people that want guns, they're going to have guns. Right. Like the that's true. Like you know, what I'm saying you know they talking about putting the registry on and all this stuff. Nah, okay. You think you think you can march down the O block right now and take them thugs' guns? Right. I like to fucking see you try. <laughs> <laughs> that's not same like same way if you go up to the mountains of Appalachia. I love to see motherfuckers come up there and take their guns. Right. Yeah, you going home with them bad man? Nah. He ain't going home. Not when you fuck with that Appalachian dude. Nah, he ain't going to be seen again. Like, <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Old mean, block, you go home with a bag. But them nick, nah, you ain't going to see. Yeah, I don't know 
what happened to old Jimmy? He came up there. He was talking about something to him. He going to get their guns. Well, I told him it was a bad idea. Yeah, God man. damn it. So, yeah, that's, you know, that's that's my part in words. Everybody, just be careful out here, man. You know, don't don't, sure. don't become a statistic. Yep. And uh, just watch out for yourself, you know. Yep. You and yours, your family and all that. Yep, yep. Did you uh, want to say anything else before we wrap it up? No, I believe that's it. I just, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, just be careful, guys. Be, you know, be safe out here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, Subscribe. And subscribe. One more time. Like, share, share subscribe. subscribe. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. We need money Alloc- allocated to buy more, more vinyl more records, records. <laughs> and more tickets to see Wu Tang. That's, r- that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> man, I'm ready for that. Man, man, hey, I appreciate that, man. Absolutely, I man. I appreciate that. Glad so I could do it, man. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we, uh, you know, before we sign out, you know, this has just been episode 212. Thank y'all for checking us out for yet another week. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll have a lyrical breakdown sometime during the middle of the week for y'all to check out, you know, where we just try to give flowers to some of our favorite artists and their favorite verses. But, um, you know, for Triad Hip Hop Podcast, this is your man, Kurt, and this is Howie. And we're going to see y'all on the next one. Peace. Peace.